Because every woman's experience with pregnancy is different, it's important to learn about the associated risks in order to ensure the healthiest pregnancy possible. Preterm birth is one of the most common possible complications, affecting 12% of U.S. pregnancies. The purpose of this podcast, therefore, is to review the current recommendations for reducing the risk of repeated preterm birth. Preterm birth is defined as a delivery prior to 37 weeks gestational age. It can put newborns at risk for serious medical problems. Some of these include intestinal, brain, and breathing complications like respiratory distress syndrome, increased risk of infection, jaundice, and poor weight gain. These issues can translate into long-term problems for the child, such as chronic lung disease, blindness, or cerebral palsy. High-risk pregnancies sometimes necessitate what we call an intentional preterm birth. This accounts for only 25% of all cases of preterm birth. This means that the majority of preterm births are spontaneous and without early signs or symptoms. There are several risk factors for preterm birth. A prior preterm birth is the most important risk factor. Also, maternal factors like poor nutrition, anemia, low pre-pregnancy weight, smoking, medical complications like diabetes and hypertension, and prior cervical surgery increase the risk of preterm birth. Finally, circumstances in the current pregnancy, including twins and triplets, and potentially infections, can increase the risk. There are several ways to reduce the chance of recurrent preterm birth. First and foremost, women in this high-risk category are encouraged to consult with their obstetrician or a maternal fetal medicine specialist prior to conceiving. This creates an opportunity to proactively identify and correct risk factors that may interfere with a healthy pregnancy and delivery. Some recommendations may include weight gain or loss to achieve an ideal maternal weight. Folic acid, iron, or calcium supplements might also be suggested. Taking folic acid before conceiving has been associated with a decreased risk of spina bifida and preterm birth, as well as improving birth weight. If there are existing medical disorders, proper treatment can be discussed in order to increase the patient's chances for a healthy pregnancy. Once a woman is successfully conceived, she is encouraged to seek early and adequate prenatal care. This allows a physician to screen for factors like anemia and proper weight gain and to look for signs and symptoms of preterm labor by monitoring cervical length with an ultrasound. Frequent communication with a physician or nurse during the pregnancy and education about the symptoms of preterm labor has been shown to reduce repeated preterm birth in high-risk populations. One specific complication that can result in recurrent preterm birth and mid-pregnancy loss is cervical insufficiency. This painless opening of the cervix happens in the second trimester and usually results in loss of the pregnancy before the fetus is developed enough to survive. Fortunately, Cervical insufficiency affects only 1% of all pregnancies. It can be treated with a surgical placement of a cerclage in the cervix, thereby reducing the risk of pregnancy loss. Early prenatal care in women with prior preterm birth can help determine the need for a cerclage. One of the most recent advances in the prevention of repeated preterm birth is the use of weekly progesterone injections. This has been shown to reduce repeat preterm deliveries by as much as 30 to 40%. Progesterone has not been used in women with active preterm labor, nor has it been shown to be beneficial in women carrying twins or triplets. Weekly progesterone shots are currently recommended for women with a singleton pregnancy who've had a prior previous preterm delivery. In summary, the best recommendations for prevention of recurrent preterm birth include preconception care to address risk factors, entering the next pregnancy as healthy as possible, receiving early and adequate prenatal care once pregnant, evaluation for cervical cerclage, and weekly progesterone injections. While not all cases can be prevented, these interventions may help reduce the recurrence of preterm birth and improve the outcomes for these high-risk pregnancies. For more information, please contact your obstetrical care provider. Information about preterm birth can also be found on the University of North Carolina Maternal Fetal Medicine website, mombaby.org, and through the March of Dimes. Finally, the UNC Division of Maternal Fetal Medicine 
provides consultation in offices in Raleigh, at Rex Hospital, and at the UNC Women's Hospital in Chapel Hill. Call us at 919-966-2131.